good morning everyone um, welcome to winning together webinar uh, where uh, the topic is lighting architecture uh, let me uh, call in ms deshna mukhopadhyay to introduce today's eminent speaker lighting academy uh, for joining this morning special webcast uh, my name is sudeshna mukhopadhyay uh, and i am the leader of the center of competence in lighting applications in india and i also lead the philips lighting academy and therefore i really have the special privilege to do the honors of welcoming none other than architect sanjay mohe to today's webcast uh, i'm really privileged to do so and i think uh, these are the you know the special privileges you have uh, in your own position uh, as i have now before i do that let me also introduce the philips lighting academy to you uh, many of you may be interacting with us this is quite a new initiative of philips uh, uh, with the sole purpose of structuring lighting education and provide platforms of cross learning so lighting academy is not exactly a training academy for philips products or solution uh, but we are more uh, focused on lighting education especially in the area of design and application and when i talk about providing platforms of cross learning uh, we have with through various programs like this and beyond eminent architects visual designers engineers green specialists educators Uh, who uh, occasionally come to us and you know we have all these cross learning platforms we have collaborations also with uh, various colleges of architecture and engineering colleges and some institutions practicing institutions like uh, iid or igbc or terry for that matter where we conduct uh, regular courses or short term courses and again focus mostly on lighting design and application Uh, we realize that lighting design per se and lighting design application is still not part of any educational courses or structured education courses and it is our endeavor uh, to co-partner with many of the architectural colleges or even independent architects to get this lighting design education established uh, in india within the philips lighting academy offerings so we have quite a few things we have our own website and i'm sure many of you log in there as well in our website we have a lot of online courses online resource library uh, you can also hear videos from eminent lighting designers global lighting designers who practice lighting design in various parts of the world and their you know perspectives on lighting and lighting design we also use platforms like this today the webex to conduct personal teaching that means small group or, or distance teaching and of course we also do face to face programs as well that means on site programs as well now let me come to the main uh, man in today's session to the world of architecture and lighting architect sanjay mohe needs no introduction he remains to be one of the most respected architects in india with a sustainable and simplicity oriented designs rooted in india's traditional culture for someone who lets his work do the talking always his sustainable and simplicity oriented designs have a deep deep connect to indian's tra traditional culture it would be a very very illuminating uh, an hour and a half talking to architect sanjay mohe about architecture and lighting the sage like architect gives architecture a spiritual spin as calming as his own self himself architect sanjay mohe graduated from the sir j j school of architecture bombay in 1976 securing the claude barclay gold medal he is also the founder of the 11 year bengaluru based uh, mind space architect mohe has held many positions of repute prior to that He also worked overseas in Saudi Arabia. He worked with Charles Correa and Architecture Design Associates. Uh, worked with Chandavarkar and Thacker before he started his own firm. 
he has designed many many projects it would be you know a very long introduction and i don't want to eat into his time he's done research laboratories knowledge park campus design factories beach resort library corporate office hospices but one special project needs to be mentioned is karunashray the home for the terminally ill in bangalore i mean this is really uh, you know if you, like all of you can understand uh, the importance and depth of you know designing a project like this architect mohit has also won uh, several awards uh, and he has i mean really a very very long list uh, just to mention a few uh, he has been honored with the and and spectrum foundation architecture award the golden architect award in india he has many many times uh, won the jk simmons architects of the year award uh, starting as early as 1991 and in very recent times in 2013 as well he has also won the and spectrum foundation architecture award in many years jk simmons state architect of the year award the award of the journal of the indian institute of architects and the gold medal from arcadia 1998 so over to uh, all uh, to you vivek and architect mohit to take it on uh, from bangalore now and uh, i wish all of you an extremely enjoying enlightening and a great great session ahead thank you sir for joining us and it is really an honor for us to have you in our platform today thank you very much architect mohit thank you thank you sudarshan for such a long and elaborate introduction um, so let me start uh, um the topic of light in architecture now um i'm going to talk i'm sitting in um, philips office but i am going to talk about natural lighting not about architectural lighting not about uh, artificial lighting um so uh, okay um so uh, these are some of the images of banaras and banaras is known as a city of lights and if you see this celebration of light um you see this contrast between water and lamp you know water and fire and it creates that amazing kind of a kind of a contrast between these two and which creates that uh, very powerful kind of a statement and uh, this whole celebration of light which happens in banaras it's um when you see these images it's quite amazing because you have these large plains of water there is this fire happening there is a sound there is smoke there is smell and can you imagine the kind of ambiance in which this kind of whole celebration happens and this is something which i have not experienced it personally but i can imagine the kind of ambiance that this whole place would generate um so 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 this whole kind of a uh, ambiance which happens in this uh, this setting we traditionally traditionally we celebrate light all our festivals are designed to celebrate light um you we have different examples of that you know light and color and then we have architecture to celebrate light as well this is like a shish mahal and uh, the amazing part of it is when you have a light and we start moving that light that entire space keeps changing uh, you know the quality of space that the power that this space generates then we have uh, Uh, we have music to uh, celebrate different times of the day different the, as the light changes the quality of music changes the ragas changes so you have ragas for morning you have ragas for af- for afternoon you have ragas for evening um and when this light quality changes from morning early, in the during the early morning or during evening that's always a most colorful moment and it's not only just colorful moment it sort of connects with your emotions and especially in the evening it is proved that when the light sort of changes that light quality changes uh, it sort of affects a lot of people who are sort of uh, you know emotionally stressed and and you would experience it when you sort of go for a afternoon movie and when you come out of that movie theater you suddenly feel disoriented about it so there is that very very strong connect between the light quality and emotions and which happens during morning and evening and if you ask me what is the probably the most 
beautiful light that you experienced in your life you would always go back to nature and i would look at this light which is filtered through the clouds or light filtering through um, the leaves um, especially um, especially when you travel in the bus and when your eye eye level is little higher i'm saying not in car but in bus um when uh, and you see these uh, paddy fields and the way the color of that paddy field changes you know against the light and through the light uh, that change of color itself is quite uh, quite powerful to, to look at uh, the lightning uh, the fog i mean this is something again again quite amazing and especially most of these delhiites would experience it and it's like uh, like watching a movie you know you suddenly some place it go, it all gets cleared up and you get a very clear picture of the entire scenario beyond and then it disappears next moment so it's it's a great fun to just look at that quality of light right and then you have these uh, this evening light the moonlight with some absolutely sharp shadows um so so this this whole idea of using that moonlight and probably that's the reason most of our festivals are also during this either full moon night or during new moon night um so there is always that idea of celebration idea of uh, you know connecting that uh, that light quality with our um you know live normal living um and i wonder always why do we get fascinated with this natural light and probably one of the reasons is it is never constant it is always um, changing and this is like like if you see a fire or if you see water you will never be able to get two similar pictures of that you know because every moment every second it's it's not the same it is it is something which is changing all the time and which you can't hold on to and that's the reason when you you see this setting sun almost like every day but you want to stop one more day and want to and to have a look at it because you really enjoy seeing that you can't possess it you can't hold on to it now um how do you really connect all these things with architectural space is it really possible to have these qualities of light that we just experience and can you really connect it with architectural space and really uh, you know um, use it to architectural advantage now on the stage people have used it um, using artificial light you you create different ambiances and you create different moods and you try to connect it with the with the emotions and throughout your life all all of us architects you know struggle so hard to create that connect with light and emotions and then you try to build a story out of it you sort of um create those different points of references having different uh, special qualities and you you sort of link them across the space and and as the um as 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 the whole sequence changes the entire story changes so so you sort of spend all your life trying to understand what that sequence space sequence should be what image emotional quality of space should be uh now this is a hospice uh, project which uh, uh, which was just talked about and um, this is in bangalore and what we were trying to do is orient the entire building towards the east towards the right towards the rising sun and um, uh, and trying to blank off the western side obviously to uh to stop the radiation from the western sun from coming in but but mainly uh the uh, the occupants here are terminally ill patients and they spend last few days of their life in this building so we wanted them to look at a rising sun and not a setting sun um and um and the next thing was about um uh using that quality of uh, uh reflective quality of water and uh, reflect that light onto the ceiling and you would get these uh, you know moving images so when a patient sitting uh, sleeping on the bed uh, he or she doesn't look at a fan but look at this uh, uh, you know movement of uh, of reflection of water which is which falls onto the ceiling um and this water again has this amazing quality which can be absolutely calm at one time and can become extremely turbulent at the other time uh, now we we are becoming more and more visual we are we, are, we our most of the video games are are visual we are uh, uh, always uh, you know attached to the tv screen all the time whether it is a computer or or a tv at home so so 
even the architectural experience is also becoming more and more usual because we tend to um tend, tend tend to sort of judge the quality of architecture just by pictures and and um what i feel is that's not a correct thing to do because when you just look at the picture and you frame it um and remove it out of out of the entire context you really don't know what is happening behind you you don't know the temperature of the place you don't know whether it is hot cool whether it is noisy whether it is smelly or uh, so you are you are not experiencing a space you are just a outsider and that's not a correct way of judging uh, judging the space but that's what is happening another thing is um, in these office spaces you tend to tend to sort of close all the curtains have one constant uh, 300 lux light uh, light going on and you really don't know whether there is a cloud pass passing by outside there's a, the the quality of light changing and that's something which i feel is most important thing to experience you know you have to be part of the nature to experience that um that change in the in the light quality and um uh, and uh, look at this uh, look at this picture i mean this is uh, uh, this is michelangelo's uh, david and as talking about the changing light source and 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 just see that changing of light source what it does to this picture i mean that is the intelligence and that's the that's the greatness of michelangelo just by changing the source of the light the entire expression of the face changes um and this is something which i always want uh, want to remember every time i design a space that um just by changing the light source the, the the entire quality of emotion everything changes and we are blessed with this uh, possibility of having sun movement from morning to evening from uh, from january to december and it keeps changing throughout every every day it is different and can you really exploit that change of light source to create different moods different emotions um so you take a cube you start puncturing it and you start bringing light within the uh, within the space and you try to bring in the right amount of light for the right kind of activity which you are sort of designing it for uh but when you bring light in uh, light is the energy so you are bringing heat also inside and that's where the whole idea of sustainability comes in so you start using solar charts and you start studying the location of the sun and how do you bring in the light but you don't bring in the heat so you try to reflect the light of the of some surface too so you start studying sections and you try to see that um, irrespective of the number of floors irrespective of the depth of the building you somehow work out some sections in such a way that you you try to bring in uh, you know the kind of light which you are looking at so 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 we always um, say that uh, as long as there is a light outside natural light available outside you should try your best as an architect to make sure that you don't have to switch on lights as much as possible so so you uh, so that's the reason you keep working out with these sections you open it out you create these wind tunnels and uh, uh, try all kinds of tricks to do that and that's great fun and that's what is i mean fun doing architecture so this is uh, this is one example of uh, nift hyderabad where um, uh, we had to deal with this southwest radiation uh, of uh, hyderabad heat uh, so we worked with these uh, blank walls towards uh, towards the southwest and tried to bring reflected light and again air through these gaps so so this is a western side and it's absolutely blank as you see but there are gaps kept in between to allow allowing reflected light to come in and then between these gaps there are skylights which are placed at different levels so when you look at the section now this is the western wall and we are trying to bring light through this into that space which is um, which is the main uh, circulation space and that's how you sort of tackle the western uh, side you know you you bring light from the top illuminate the space again you illuminate and then try to create um, kind of a desired ambiance within that space you so so see these pockets where you get a focused light and then you get a uh, relatively uh, you know lesser light onto this wall um so again the same space 
Uh, this is one more library where again we had to face it towards the towards the. This is the eastern side. So I'll just draw this. So the section where the western sun was brought in through the skylight, and the, the thus the reflected light comes into the library space below. So instead of bringing the direct sun into the space, you try to deflect the light off it and try to bring indirect light. Thus, the heat doesn't come in, but the light comes into the space. Now, um, one of the professors from JNC had given a talk in our office, and he showed this image to us. And um, what he said is, um, uh, this, is the, this is a night image of the entire globe with a moving camera as the, as the Earth moves. But all the darkest, all the all the brightest part spots are those where the developed countries are, and the darkest part spots are there where the undeveloped countries are. But what he says is we tend to waste so much of light. You know, we sort of we have uplighters, we keep uplighting trees, buildings, and all, and so much light gets wasted into the space. So so he said that over the years, as the countries become you know, you when you know how to really handle the light, how really to control the light, the developed countries would be the darkest spot in the globe, and uh, you know it will the whole whole um, whole image will get reversed, which was quite an interesting observation, I thought. Um, so, so it's not only about sustainability; the light is mathematics also. I mean, you have these uh, solar chart, solar uh, clocks, where you actually uh, you can do certain things with absolutely mathematical precision. And one of the examples is this Abu Simbel temple, um, which was in uh, the Aswan Dam had to be constructed. And uh, this temple was getting submerged. And this was one of those UNESCO projects, which was uh, where every stone was ensured. And the entire temple, it's huge, uh, huge project, where the entire project was sh shifted above and kept above the flood level. Now. Um, what happens in this is on a particular day uh, of a year, uh, this light enters right into the sanctum sanctuary, which is at the end of this entire um, uh, rock cut cave, and it eliminates the uh, eliminates the figure which is at the back, which is supposed to be the uh, the birth date of Pharaoh, the king. And uh, when this temple was was shifted up, one of the conditions was on the same day the light has to enter uh, the the inner cell. Um, so so when they oriented it, uh, they oriented it exactly the same way. And one of my friends had worked on this project, and then they said when that light came in, there was a huge celebration and they had a party and all. That. But but it's mathematics. I mean, you have to just orient it exactly in the same way, and you will get it. And we were trying to do it in one of the temples what we did, and this is a Sai Baba temple in Bangalore. And on a particular day, we wanted to sort of bring in light, uh, which would actually fall onto the idol, um, which we worked out the entire thing, but uh, it it really didn't happen. Uh, but uh, but but what uh, what I'm trying trying to say is it's it's very easy to do it, and now with all the softwares, it has become uh, even more easier. Uh, so, so if you see this temple again, we were trying to see uh, as against the traditional shikara, we were trying to bring in light through this volume, um, and uh, uh, these are some of the images of how the light comes into the space below. Uh, now again about uh, mathematics and the light. I mean, this is one of the one of the installations done by uh, one of the British team, uh, where uh, they have these kind of a crazy perfor perforations which are uh, which are perforated onto the onto this installation. But the way sun moves on a particular day, uh, it actually completes the entire poem. So this is installed in the in in a school. And uh, when you when you see it from morning nine o'clock to to evening three o'clock, you would be able to read the entire poem. And I thought, which is the amazing thing, because the kids learn how the sun moves, how the light falls onto it, and they they learn literature also in the process. Um, this is Virupaksha Temple in um, uh, in Hampi. 
and this is the principle of pinhole camera where uh, where the light gets uh, the image of a shikhara you you see it as an inverted image here and um, this is again a pure mathematics or pure science uh, now there is a technology also involved when it comes to lighting and um, uh, uh, this is this is about controlling natural light and this is arab institute in paris by john nouvel and this most of you must be knowing about this is one of the probably one of the first um, uh installations where you actually uh, these are uh, uh these are cells which are sensitive to the light sunlight which falls onto it and this aperture uh, becomes smaller or bigger depending on the amount of light you want to bring in so we are <clears throat> getting exposed to now more and more intelligent skins and um, as as the time progresses controlling light through natural devices will become more and more easier to through this uh different intelligent skins but uh, we as architects have to have to solve the problem through design i mean uh, i mean one of the ways is to use these technologies uh, to solve it but if you can solve it through the design i think that's the that's probably the right right approach and the second second layer would happen uh, using technology which um, which does need more money it involves cost uh but whenever you you solve a problem through common sense it doesn't need cost uh now um now um, this is one of the houses what we have done in bangalore and um, this is again about using this um, device to control the light so what we we have is this entire roof has operable louvers and each of these panel can be operated independent of each other or or we can synchronize it but it's it's almost like a magic cube you know where you can you can play with the light almost you know you whenever you want you bring in more light whenever you want you bring in lesser light and uh, there is this space within that so i all i call it as a you know room within room kind of a space uh, so so you have these operable louvers that's how it looks like from outside uh, but when you come in you have this the entire celebration of light happening and 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 what i like about it is is you can change these moods whenever you want you open it and close it and and when this actually change happens uh, when you play with this remote control and it changes it's like it's like fun i mean as a almost you feel like a kid uh, you know handling that light so so this this whole space keeps changing um and and as you see you can you can totally black it off also so you can make it even a completely dark space if required um now um traditionally we have been masters in handling this light through jalis uh through these screens and um, and some of the best examples of this modulation of light is south indian temples you know where you go in layer by layer you know from one layer to another layer to to third layer till you reach the garbhagraha which is actually the smallest and darkest place so um, this transition happens in a quite amazing way you know you you sort of go from out to in layer by layer first you remove your shoes you touch uh, you touch the floor you sensitize your skin you 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 go and uh, ring the bells you sensitize your ears you light a lamp you sensitize your eyes you have tirtha prasad you sensitize sense sensitize your tongue so all your senses get sensitized as you move from one layer to another layer and in the process the light quality changes the volume changes the darkness changes so as the volume becomes denser the temperature also comes down uh the smell changes the sound changes you have outside the uh, uh, noisy dust and noise here it becomes quieter and quiet quieter you start smelling flowers and eventually it ends into one dark space which is symbol of infinity again so um, so it's quite a uh, it's it's quite an amazing transition and very very skillfully done that you don't even know how you move from you know one space to another uh, but slowly all our cities all our architecture is becoming more and more transparent and that transition what i was talking about is somehow not happening 
there is so much of transparency there is just there's so much of reflection and what are we reflecting we are just reflecting some neighboring building uh, so the the ray of light what we were talking about um, that is getting lost and if we want to preserve that ray of light, you need to have right enclosure. You need to have right darkness along for that um, for that uh, for the for the presence of light to happen. Um, and uh, Louis Kahn has made this wonderful statement, and he says, "Sun never knew how wonderful it was until it fell on the wall of a building." And uh, for that to happen, you need to have a surface, and you have to celebrate that light by modulating that surface. Uh, and that surface can even be smoke, like what we saw uh, in very initial pictures of Banaras. I mean, if you want to really celebrate light, you need a medium to do that. Um, so, so we try to do that in every project, and we try to bring the natural source of light as close to the wall as possible. Uh, if you see some of our earlier buildings, most of these skylights used to be somewhere in the center. And then we quickly realized that it's important to be closer to the wall. So uh, we now, if you see most of our buildings do that, which is it's almost becoming becoming repetitive in, in some of our projects. But uh, but we think it is important. I mean, if you really want to uh, show that it it has to happen. Now, um, if you if you see different climatic zones. Um, uh, if you see in Rajasthan, where the hot, dry zone, uh, you need to create internal courtyards to to protect the protect protect the protect yourself from the heat and dust. So you end up having these blank walls, and those black blank walls, this with that color and texture, start reflecting light, and your sensitivity towards architecture changes, towards understanding of the the light changes. Uh, and if you look at uh, Kerala, which is again hot and humid zone, uh, there again the, there is a different sensitivity because uh, the roofs come down as close to the ground as possible, and you get a reflected light off the ground into the space. So this is much more soothing, quieter light which which comes in, which is uh, uh, which feels very different compared to what you would see it in Rajasthan. Um, and this is uh, this is in Trichur in one of the muds. But what is interesting is in that same mud there is uh, this, this roof which comes here. It comes almost about two feet or three feet above the water, and and see the amount of the kind of light which comes in through this small gap, which is probably two feet. You have this light falling onto the water and getting reflected. And we are so used to seeing the light coming from the top. Uh, you know, so you always expect a shadow of an eyebrow falling onto our shadow of the projected nose coming, uh, falling onto the face. But when you see the light coming from below, the entire the face also looks different. Uh, you know, the everything around looks different, and that's a different kind of a way of uh, seeing things. Now, if you see Gothic cat cathedrals, they have a different way of uh, uh, creating that entire ambience of connecting with with God. Uh, so you have this huge volume, the very subtle lights, the reverberation of the sound. Um, so you have this kind of mystic kind of quality with uh, uh, with a cruciform, almost like a silhouette, you know, happening. Um, and and then there is the Santa Santa Hagia, um, which is uh, in Istanbul, and um, Louis Kahn calls it as one of the greatest rooms. Um, I mean, it's like a, it's almost like a cosmos when you go and see that it's it's, it's absolutely incredible space. Um, but when uh, when Kabuzia deals with uh, with idea of a church uh, in Ronsham, uh, there's so much talked about. There is so much the people people have written so much about the changing light through these openings. But uh, Kabuzia talks about this one crack here. He says he lifts this roof by about four inches, hundred mm. And he said that crack of light of 100 mm will amaze. So, so he he takes so much pride in just lifting that roof and and bringing that small reflected light into the space. And then this is uh, Tadawando's church chapel, which he just takes this cube, makes these two cuts, 
brings light in and probably creates one of the most exciting chapels. Uh, uh, and uh, this is Louis Barragan's uh, uh, work. I mean, uh, this is this is quite <coughs> quite interesting because what what he does is you pray in this axis, uh, but he keeps cross in the other direction towards the left side when you are praying, and the shadow of the cross falls onto the end wall, and what you are praying is actually the shadow, which has that kind of a mystic godly quality and it is much bigger and much more divine quality. So people have used, uh, all these great architects have used light to, 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 to great effect. And then about framing the light, which is, uh, which is again a great idea. And I always uh, get fascinated by this idea of framing the light, which, uh, which we have tried to do in this building, in this section as you come in. You go across and you see the light at the end of this entire uh, uh, entire stretch, uh, and and framing the light is the old idea. People have done it over the years, and this is an example of Taj Mahal with a gateway in front, and it's about creating a darkness around the light which is in uh, which is in the light, um, and um, the skill of the designer is to create the depth of darkness and how much dark can you create to to sort of emphasize that and uh, we have tried to try doing it in many projects where this happens in, in one of the libraries in ISC uh, but in uh, in this um, step well in uh, in Gujarat they create series of frames it's not just one frame you have light darkness light darkness and series of frames happening which gives an additional dimension to the whole Space, which again we try to do in some of these projects where you see light, darkness, light, darkness, and then create that entire sequence across. Uh, in this project, we tried to exploit that idea of framing it and taking it to the to the next level where you come in here, you through this frame you see the entire spine, but you can't enter from here. You have to go across and enter from the other place. Uh, you come in here and you start seeing this light and. This is again a research lab, so it's almost like um, talking about cutting edge technology. So the skylight sort of turns up, hangs this, and you have very, very dramatic shadows happening across. And then again, you look back through frame where you came in from, and that's where the entire uh, uh, landscape get frame, gets framed through that. Uh, so. Now, um, Looking at studying these uh, sequence of light and shade, this is something which right from so many years uh, we have been trying to sort of understand that entire sequence. How do you create, how do you bring light in, how do you create darkness and again you create the sequence of that. I mean, one of the projects very early uh, during IIC, I had gone to the site when construction was, was going on and the shuttering was all in place except one last row uh, and the light was coming through the shuttering which looks extremely beautiful and uh, uh, those days there was not so much pressure of uh, completing building like what we have now the time constraint so we, i went back and uh, fought with structure designers to give us uh, that skylight and it happened and it made a huge difference and then we started doing it intentionally so in this building as you see you have this wall and you get this light and then again in this section, you allow the light to fall here, but you create a darkness here. So you make sure that the light doesn't fall onto this space. So in the process, what you are doing is you are creating light, you are creating darkness, you are creating light, you are creating darkness, you are creating light. So there is a play of volume, there is a play of light intensity. And you, once you understand it in the next project, you try to do it intentionally and you keep uh, keep devising these, uh, uh, you know, which uh, all of us learn over the years how to handle it. Um, I was listening to one of the talks by Rajneesh, and um, he was. Uh, this was about Buddha, and he was uh, he was using words like a godly man who was an atheist, and uh, uh, he was talking about um, presence of ab presence of ab absence, and uh, um, you know, uh, those kind of contrasting words. And I thought, how do you really create that in? Okay. Um, uh, I was just wondering, how do you how do you create how do you really replicate that in architectural space? 
um, that that contrasting element. So so this was the idea where um, you have a black cube uh, which has a light all around, and then there is a cube which has light within, and which is kept across the spine as uh, as two elements which are countering each other. Uh, this happens in one axis. This happens in other axis. So you see through black cube into the uh, yellow cube. So that's the black cube, which is almost like a floating in in light uh, against this cube, which has light within. Um, and this is from the from this black cube. We are looking at the at the other one. So you you create that kind of uh, tension. You create that creative tension. Uh, within within the space, uh, this is the same thing again from the yellow cube. We are looking at a black across. Uh, there's something about moving lights and moving shadows, <clears throat> and um, uh, and this is something again which fascinates me. That silhouettes the uh, the transparencies, translucencies, um, uh, the, the puppet shows. You know, which is again very very famous thing in Far East. Uh, now I was um, I was watching one of the movies. This was in mid 80s. This uh, this was Ketan Mehta's film called uh, um, Mirch Masala or Garam Masala, Mirch Masala, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, in that, and this is the first time I I could realize the importance of controlling light. Uh, um, this is where uh, I mean this is not a same image from that, but there was one big gate, and then within that there was. Uh, uh, there was one more gate. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, within that, there was one more gate, and this morning sun and this Ompuri comes in. He opens one smaller gate. The light comes in. Then he comes in, closes that gate. The light stops. Then he opens the bigger gate. Again, light comes in. So it's like releasing light and you know blocking the light again, releasing it and. You always wonder, can you do it in architectural space? I mean, this is has some incredible quality of handling, uh, you know, natural light, and can you really do it in in architectural space? And you always, uh, you know, keep it at the back of your mind. How do you really try to do it? And then uh, we were doing um, this Unilever auditorium, and uh, we wanted to feel that moving shadows. You know, as you as you walk around. You will see that um, that shadows which will which will keep moving around. Um, so, sorry. So, so you have these shadows as you as you sort of walk around. There would be a feeling of movement of the. Uh, it's almost like a musical instrument. Uh, so that's the space of the auditorium. Now, now this is one. Uh, this is one fun thing. Uh, now, when you see this chameleon, and uh, if you see the movement of these eyes, um, it has a terrific quality. When you when you see these eyes, the way they move, um, actually this edge behaves like a rim, and it's a cone which sort of moves in different directions. So if you really analyze it, and this is something which I was watching uh, one of these national geographics, and, uh, saw this and uh, we thought it has a it has an incredible potential of changing the light source if you just convert this into a into an object. So so we were trying to just uh, design this window which has this conical kind of a thing, and you could actually change the light if if it moves around this rim. In the morning, if you want to get a direct morning sunlight, you can do that. If you want to just in the evening, you want to stop the sunlight from coming in. You can just do it by rotating that, uh, or you can, you know, exploit it in different ways. So, so it has a quality of movement, you know. Uh, sorry. So, so this whole facade could actually change as you, uh, as you sort of. Uh, so, so it could become a dynamic facade, which is, which could be a very simple solution. Uh, so it's about bringing the light from different heights, different levels. Uh, the, when you when you have a normal window which is at your eye level, the kind of light which would come in would be different. The spread will be different. Uh, when you bring it from the top, it is different. Uh, uh, when when you see it like that coming from the ceiling, it is uh, uh, it it has a it has a totally different quality to it. 
so you learn to handle light you you learn to position the light and and sort of try to find how it comes uh, comes in and uh, we try to sort of study it we um, we have a software available now earlier we used to do it through calculations but 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 about this rotunda i mean as across the years or across the day how the light would change in plan or in actual thing uh, we try to make uh, make studies of that in different projects and um, and then you actually experience that you know you see these layers and then the then the way the light quality changes there <clears throat> and and as i said uh, you know when you use this and then you actually see that movement of the these shadows happening um, the space becomes dynamic um this is one other, other example where uh, yeah. okay okay i will take probably a little more time um so um so as you as you come in uh, into this is one of the research labs which is uh, which is in uh, bangalore called uh, origin discoveries uh, so what we did is we created a path of discovery uh, which culminates into this rotunda so as you come in you keep discovering the space you don't see what is happening beyond and then it slowly comes here and it uh, it explodes into a larger space which uh, we wanted to have a wow factor there kind of uh, so so you come in from there and uh, this is the western side uh, you come in you you just see one spot of light here which is a courtyard and which becomes a focal point uh, you come further and again you want to so that that becomes one focal point but you always have this uh, different kind of quality of light happening across and uh, this feeling of light keeps changing throughout the day and uh, and then you come into this this larger space um, which is which is actually a learning center there is auditorium here lecture halls dining and uh, breakout space in the middle <clears throat> and that's how the space looks like when you when you look back and it has that um, uh, you know cutting edge research kind of a, uh, this 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 place is for r&d uh, r&d lab so we wanted to make it like a uh, like a cutting edge research uh, place now the same <clears throat> space during the night uh, it changes and uh, the the areas which were bringing natural light inside start bringing in artificial light and we wanted to render the entire space with a similar uh, similar quality of uh, uh, light and color so just to give that carved out space so it feels as if the entire space is carved out of one material almost like uh, some of these rock cut architecture hmm. um uh, <clears throat> we uh, we tend to uh, spend a lot of time trying to understand the soffits of the building uh, so you you sort of create a dark spot here bringing in light again you you create what i was explaining earlier uh, and and try to try to see how light falls onto this uh, and study these soffits at different levels and the reflected light which falls onto this okay 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 uh so um, so you uh, we are we are talking about that reflected light which which falls onto the soffits and we uh, tend to spend a lot of time trying to understand understand that uh, uh, um again the same thing what i'm talking about the flat soffits uh, we try to uh fight with all the structure designers to uh, to invert the beams and suspend the slabs and things like that uh giving us uh, absolutely flat surfaces in most of the projects um <clears throat> this is in trichy care campus um again the similar ideas now um now this is uh, uh, ms hussain's painting of mother teresa and he uses these blue lines very very effectively and this power of these lines is uh, it's uh, these lines are so powerful 
that you always wonder how do you really uh, capture that kind of thing in architectural space can we create those kind of powerful lines in architectural space um so you see one of the examples this is uh, hussein's uh, uh, you know gufa where um, again hussein paints these lines on the top and again within the space <clears throat> but other example is um, uh, uh, this bath where uh, uh, peter zumta's work where he uses these small slits these are hardly about 4 inches wide about 100 mm wide uh but the kind of uh, kind of a light quality which get generated within that and then the water below which again reflects that light um this is something which is uh, which is which is quite amazing and we were trying to do one uh, uh kindergarten in trichy where where we tried to use those uh, those slits in the space and that's the model of that and we wanted the kids to sort of run through the light, that light because Uh, most of these kids they get amazed by the by the ray of light which comes in and they want to catch it and and here you have this entire sheet of light so we were imagining kids jumping in and out of that sheet of light and that would create that uh, uh, the extra fun element into this space so so we created these kind of slits within uh, within the space <clears throat> so uh, so handling these uh, uh this filtered light which uh, which had been the mastery of all of our um, ancestors and the the best thing about these uh, these jalis where it is not like a glass where uh, it doesn't breathe now these jalis breathe you can actually have that transparency or translucency uh and then at the same time you will have a breeze coming in as well uh but now those things are getting changed with these uh, perforated panels um and this is one of the projects where we use this perforated sheets and then you try to understand the transparencies and translucencies and you keep uh making mock ups up on the site to see the dimensions of the perforations whether it should be 6 mm or 8 mm or 10 mm and then through one layer you want to see the other layer and uh you want to get a exact right kind of translucency so so that's uh, that's again we wanted this line to go through and but at the same time this plane should be formed so and then the kind of shadows that you get um uh, this has happened accidentally but uh, we had not imagined that this kind of uh, uh shadows will be will be formed but uh, uh some times you get pleasant accidents some most of the time you get unpleasant accidents but uh, that's part of architecture so this is again part of the part of other uh, uh you know dining hall and small bank counter where we were trying to again modulate light through the uh, through this slits and having perforated sheets on the top and uh, this is the last one uh, uh where uh, <clears throat> this is in im bangalore where we recently did a extension to uh, uh, uh to this space uh this part is done by mr doshi and uh, this is uh, probably the most famous uh, pergola colonnade which every student of architecture knows about so we had to complement this and create a um, create a classroom complex across uh, so so this is this is that pergola main movement area and there was a uh, there was there was a lateral movement in the other direction the secondary spine so we oriented um, some of these classrooms this was this is the main pergola area uh, this is the lateral spine and then you have these classrooms placed there uh, the large flight of steps going across uh, which culminates into one reading hall at the end as a focal point uh, and then when we were sort of looking at it we said uh, the the dramatic quality of light which uh, which this pergola main spine has uh we have to complement that when we started drawing some of these sketches where we said can we have different cubes which bring in different light into the space so some of them became uh, uh meeting rooms uh, hanging out some of them the, the cubes were were coming from as skylights so so that's the main spine and this is how the space looks like now so you have these meeting rooms you have these cubes so 
with different cubes uh, hanging from the space. This was a Western wall, so we wanted that filtered Western light to come in, which started happening. You know, so if you go there three o'clock onwards, you will see these dots uh, happening, which is which is fun. Um, and then we were trying to control the light within the classrooms, um, which I'll just explain quickly. So these are the images. Looking back at the western wall, the main pergola. Uh, so when you when you are talking about a classroom, we want different kind of lighting requirements. When you have normal lecture on, lecture with slides, lecture with AC on, without AC on. So you need different configurations, which we were trying to achieve by uh, sliding two sets of these perforated hole screens. And if you move them by just about 200 mm, you can create either total darkness or you can get a filtered light coming in. So, so you can uh, you can either have this or you can close it. So you can either get light or uh, you can close it. So just with a very simple rugged uh, mechanism, we try to achieve that. Um, and this is how the classroom looks like, which can work without AC, with AC, uh, with projection, without projection. Uh, and this is how the screen looked like from outside. Uh, so to end the presentation, um, whether you are doing a house um, or doing a research lab or a school or a temple, you try to work with light, you try to celebrate light, you try to create different moods. Uh, but when you look at the work of masters, whether Doshi or especially Louis Kahn, um, you always keep that as, uh, you know, our idols and you want to achieve something and you keep trying over and over again to reach that standard and connect your space with emotions and uh, celebrate light. Thank you very much.